The UK has a lot of bird life. On any given day, you might be able to see some sparrows, you might see some doves, or you might even see a robin. And if you go further afield, you might even see a woodpecker, a buzzard, or if you're lucky, a red kite. Now in this country as well, we have a noisy inhabitant called the parakeet. And if you check out my Animal Anomaly series on episode two, you'll find out more about that and why they're here. Puppy. <laughs> this, this, this is, this is TJ. He's really cute, he's my dog. As you can tell, he loves me. You can. But we're not here to talk about TJ today, or puppies, or parakeets for that matter. Today, we're gonna to talk about our other parrots in the UK. Macaws. A bird that calls South America home actually calls the UK home as well. They've been seen quite a number of times on top of houses and free flying through towns. There are stories of them breaking chimneys and even one walking across a zebra crossing to get to a bakery. And this fascinated me so I decided to head up to Kirby Stephen which is spelt Kirkby but said Kirby. That was weird but whatever. And on a quick look around the town there were no signs of parrots anywhere unfortunately. However I met up with Chris Metcalf Gibson who is the chairman of the John Strutt Center for Parrot Conservation. We followed him back to where this story originates from and on the drive way in this happened oh 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 there's a macaw oh my god see if i stand underneath I, yeah, I can, see. can you see me yeah i can see the macaw he's above my head that's a macaw in kirby stephen how oh, weird's that it's literally as soon as we pulled into here and uh there it was was that a nice view of my face by the way <laughs> yeah i think that's a scarlet macaw up there that's really Strange. I had a quick look around the aviaries they have there which featured a variety of different birds such as an African grey parrot, cockatiels, green amazons and eclectus before heading inside to chat to Chris to find out why this is a thing. Well it started with John Strutt and his interest in birds from yeah. childhood and on a world travel, uh, worldwide trip he came across all the exotic birds in Australia and, and South America and uh, he had a discussion with an MP in, London, in the House of Commons to see if it was all right to bring birds into the country. And then he had a letter from House of Commons to say, yes, it was. And that was about 20, 30 years ago. So it grew from that, and not only just macaws, but also African greys. We used to have African greys at liberty. And also, apart from the macaws, the parakeets, green amazons. There are about 30 green amazons at liberty. And these nest in around the villages around here. The locals like them. You can always tell people who are not native to Kirby Stephen, because these macaws would fly over, making this terrible noise, mm. and people would look up and thought they were, think they were seeing things. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. It was a big, it was quite, a, quite an attraction to the town. <laughs> Do they have the ability to fly wherever they want to? Yes. Barnard Castle is about the furthest to go to, which is about 30 miles away. Yeah. And they used to fly to the school there because the school children used to feed them. There are only three free at the moment. Macaws? Yeah. Three macaws? Yeah. So you'd have to be quite quite lucky to see them, would you say? Yeah. Will these last three, will they be it? or? There is a trust that funds the macaws. Yeah. And it was agreed by the trustees that we go ahead and buy some more birds. I mean, they are expensive, they're yeah. 900 to 1,000 pounds each. So it's interesting listening to Chris talk about why this is and where it's at now, and to find out that there are over 30 green Amazons also free around the Kirby Stephen area. That's in addition to the three macaws as well, of which we saw one as we were driving in. It's amazing to me that they've ventured over 30 miles away, and who's to say they haven't been further? They can obviously live quite easily in the English conditions, even with some of the harsh temperatures we can have in this country in comparison to South America. They're robust animals, and that sort of made me wonder about their longevity and future. Chris had mentioned that they were wanting to get some more macaws to replenish their stock, so I wondered if we'd ever see a sky full of macaws in the UK countryside, and I posed that thought to Chris. Do you, do you envisage, like, far enough down the line that, I don't know, let, let's say they breed so well that they can expand and expand and expand? Is that a No, 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 that is, we wouldn't do that because we do not want to, uh, to create chaos. <laughs> And if any, uh, if we get too many, then we'd sell them. Right, okay. Um, but it was John's wish to let them fly at liberty. Myself and I think people watching this as well would agree, it's, it's a really nice thing to have in this country. Yes. And um, it's nice that you're carrying on his wish as well. Yes, we must. And uh, as I say, he's been a very, very generous man for yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. 